called the Data Liquidity Coalition. Uh, this is a group that was organized post an IOM workshop trying to talk about how to address the next generation challenges uh, in informatics, particularly around cancer. It's a partnership assembling the diverse stakeholders. Um, you can see here some of the partners that are, uh, that are members of the coalition. So it's got universities, it's got corporate groups, uh, it's got drug companies, it's got advocacy groups, it's got data holders. And the idea is what we want to do is work together to try to solve, in particular, this data liquidity problems, the interconnectivity, the interfaces between data so that we can actually support the work uh, and interconnect information. And, one of the pieces that the Data Liquidity Coalition has been building is a next generation metadata engine that allows us, and I'm happy to drill down, I'm not sure how, how diverse or how technically deep any of the group is, but it provides a layered way for us to utilize semantics and standards so that we don't actually break the back of people who may have a data set with a data dictionary, but not anything more. They can bring that in at a particular layer, map in their data dictionary, but then because it's part of a semantic stack, the elements that are part of that data dictionary may map into a model or may map deeper into some other ontologies or vocabularies. So it's a way that allows us to assign context to deep information, to get, to transform data into information so that we can hopefully join it to get actionable knowledge. Okay, we have a physical capacity. Uh, so part of the goal of this activity is to recognize that the standalone computational center, our NGCC, isn't going to be just physically located in some data center or office building in Tempe, Arizona. Our goal is to create an elastic capability that allows us to be interacting with the world's community of hardware providers, physical capacity providers, people who have logical capacity. So again, to this audience, all your favorite app programs, platform as a service, software as a service, big data as a service. We see this NGCC as not some standalone four corners armed camp where we're going to be defending against all on, on takers, but in fact, joining with a community, a coalition of the willing that want to be participating in doing these types of activities. Uh, this is enabled by us being full members of the Internet 2 community. We're plugged into the Internet 2's 100 gigabit network. So we actually have the ability, certainly within the United States, to be able to be essentially virtually there anywhere and are working closely with groups that are embracing this internationally. For instance, a group through our Open Health Systems Laboratory group that already we have partners that are present uh, in the DC area. We have partners that are present Sweden that are present in Poland and in present in India. So high performance computing groups that are mirroring in some ways what we're trying to do with NGCC so that the virtual whole uh, in this instance becomes more than the sum of the parts. So I just want to give a couple of quick examples that this isn't just fantasy and in fact physical infrastructure that we created back even when I was at the NCI that showed proof of concept related to this. So the simplest one and I embarrassed with Elliot here, actually, to <laughs> Elliot and Paul, uh, I mean, actually to demonstrate, I think, one of the coolest things that we did at the NCI that showed how you can essentially leverage data that's in the system to be real-time evidence to help guide in a clinical setting. So again, without having to have complex production of answers, just exposing data facilitates uh, understanding. So this particular one was using the uh, the data resources associated with the TCGA radiology project and the piece of data warehouse infrastructure that we created at the NCI called Integrator that captured all of the data associated with the cancer genome analysis and the clinical characteristics of that. Now, these sort of databases are not that unique. I mean, people create them. But one of the key things we wanted to be able to do in this was use it to be able to help facilitate us doing some of this real-time evidence generation. So, so shown here is in a pseudo-clinical context, you're presented with a patient with particular, in this instance, imaging char characteristics. But in fact, we could have set any flavor of characteristics. To the, so these are imaging ones. They could have also been molecular characteristics, all these sort of things. And then we can ask the question in this infrastructure, what would alternative interventions look like in this people with these characteristics, and then produce the evidence in real time. So this, within moments, comes back. Given these alternative classifications, 
where you say, I want to see, a, in this instance, Kaplan Meier for two alternative interventions. This gives you in real time. So we haven't gone through any standards body. We haven't, we haven't met some commission. But now what we're doing is theoretically leveraging the data that's in the system to help us ask and answer questions in more than an anecdotal way that unfortunately many physicians struggle with being biased by, there's a well-known phenomenon of most recent occurrence bias that many physicians struggle with because their complexity amount of information they have to juggle. So in this instance, even if you don't want to expose this at a system level, it could be a physician just sees what happened to their last 10 patients treat with these different characteristics. Okay. We also have created proof of concept work using the molecular data in partnership with our colleagues at Booz Allen that brought together cancer genome atlas data, molecular interaction data, cancer drug mappings, and gene drug interactions. So uh, that allowed us, again, using standard big data technology in this instance. So the big data technology was uh, basically Hadoop file systems with high, with uh, HBase databases and then query engines sitting on top of it, and we could ask and answer. And I realize these are more researchy oriented questions, uh, but we can ask and answer literally these types of questions. So, so for tumor, for tumor samples from patients with progressive disease, what are the genes that differentiate those? Uh, for genes of high amplification regions, how do they drive differences in chemotherapy treatment and lifespan? So are they are there actually differences associated with these? Uh, we can actually see, uh, similar to the very first uh, presentation I gave with the Vanderbilt, in this instance, given a set of genes, what are the drugs that you would use uh, in order to that have actionable information? So again, this resource generates now in a much deeper context than the Vanderbilt resource, but generates answers to those types of questions. So the real goal would be then to move this to the next level, where we not only have just the the separated domains that I showed a minute ago where we may have clinical information and molecular information, but load all of this into our NGCC and be able to ask and answer these types of questions that are in a clinical context much more relevant, you know, given the clinical demographic and lifestyle characteristics, how does survival vary? And again, something we never ask today by especially some of these things around lifestyle characteristics or other considerations that may be really important to patients but are very difficult to have quantitatively measured. Okay, so with that, I'm going to stop. Hopefully have time for a couple questions. Thank you all for your attention. And probably more importantly, from I hope was clear, we're very interested in establishing relationships, partnerships, uh, anyone who would like to play in this broader context, we're very interested in people who are interested in rather than taking apart the puzzle, uh, reassembling all the pieces, recognizing that we may not have that uh, picture on the box to help us yet, but we think actually we've got enough smart people together that we actually have the ability to embrace the complexity of real disease and use information technology, uh, computational approaches, and big data science to actually help us make a difference. So thank you. Thank you very much. We are a little bit constrained on time, but I do want to take you to lunch. Okay. So, uh,